For this video, I will be making a Victorian men's inspired lounging cap or also known as a smoking cap. You can see a couple different uh, examples here. I've always been really interested in them and I really just want a hat with a big old tassel on it. But I had a hard time actually finding patterns for how to make them, let alone anyone else who's actually made them and made a pattern accessible for everyone. So I wanted to make it easy for anyone who wants to make one of these. So really you just need a rectangle that's as long as your head is wide. Mine's folded in half because it's to be placed in the fold. And then you need a circle for the top part. I should have done a better one. <laughs> this one's meant to be an eight inch diameter circle. You really want something bigger if you have a bigger head. I had a small head and this hat ended up being pretty small. So I remade it in a bigger size with like a 10 or 11 diameter circle and that's much better. And that's the one I will show at the end of the video. But the making process is all the same. If you want to use your pattern to cut your lining pieces and your fashion fabric pieces. Once you have both cut out, you want to attach the sides of the hat to the crown and then also, of course, finish the sides together, making a little cap. And you'll repeat both steps on the fashion fabric and the lining fabric. Now I cut my crown extra long and I ended up trimming it. I would suggest uh, probably about three and a half to four inches tall for your crown. You are gonna lose some of that in seam allowance, um, but it's really up to preference. You can have a taller hat if you want or a shorter one. It's all up to you. So to attach the lining to the fashion fabric, you're just going to place right sides together and then sew all around that bottom edge, leaving a gap to turn it inside out. And then we'll top stitch around the bottom edge of the hat and that'll seal the raw edges inside. So after you've sewn your lining to your hat, you'll then chop off all of the excess fabric, then flip the hat inside out and top stitch around that bottom edge of the hat. To make the tassel, I followed a video tutorial that showed me to use something rather rectangular. It actually makes it much easier to make the tassel, but I'm just using some chenille yarn here because I thought it might match the velvet material of my hat quite nicely. And I'm going to add a skull bead to that as well, just to add a little bit of extra spookiness. Shing. Sparkle, sparkle. And of course, to hold it all in place, a cute little button. In the middle, I'm just marked the middle with a pin there to help me place my button and my tassel. And I sewed both down so that the tassel couldn't just get loose and fall off and get lost somewhere. It's 
this is a perfect project. If you have any little old buttons that are lonely, you know, just one button. And it needs a home, and that home is the top of this hat. <laughs> And then here's the hat I made a little bit bigger for myself following the same process. I added a nice vintage glass bead to the top and then I have my chenille tassel with a skull bead and a little faceted glass crystal bead as well. Very lovely and very warm with the flannel lining and the quilted velvet top fabric. And of course I had to add my own little tag inside so I know where the back is. And there you have it, a Victorian men's lounging or smoking hat, whatever you prefer. I'm an asthmatic, so I won't be smoking in it. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Like and subscribe if you want to see more. It really helps me out and it makes me feel good. I enjoy it when I see more subscribers and likes on my videos, as well as comment down below. Uh, I love answering comments uh, for questions or just, you know, general nice things <laughs> that people say. Um, if you have any ideas for future videos, I would love your suggestions. Um, again, down below in the comment section, of course. <laughs> and I'll see you next time. Bye!